One of the greatest accomplishments of humankind is Voyager 2. Even in outer space, the spacecraft continues to function more than four decades after its launch. Astonishing and horrific findings are returned to Earth by the tenacious spacecraft. In the last moments of our solar system's history, Voyager 2 saw a massive fireball. What happens and how does it affect the Earth at this barrier? Is there a reason why Voyager 2 has been in communication with Earth for so long? Electric power is required to operate sensor arrays and transmitters. Messages would have stopped being sent long ago if the power went out. In today's video, we will look at further details about how Voyager's discovery shocked the entire space industry. Before we proceed, kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button to stay updated on our new releases. Without further ado, let's get started. Voyager 2 was launched first on August 20th, 1977, followed by Voyager 1 on September 5th, 1977. It took the use of an unusual orbital placement of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune that allowed a multi-planet tour with very low fuel consumption and flying duration for the twin spacecraft expedition. As a result of the alignment, each spacecraft on a certain trajectory was able to take advantage of the acceleration and direction changes that occur while falling into the gravitational field of a planet. Voyager 1 swung past Jupiter on March 5, 1979, and then proceeded towards Saturn, which it arrived at on November 12, 1980, using this gravity assist or slingshot approach. After that, it changed course and headed out of our solar system. As compared to Voyager 1, Voyager 2 moved more slowly and took a longer path. On July 9, 1979, it crossed Jupiter, and on August 25, 1981, it passed Saturn. Following its encounters with Uranus and Neptune, it was propelled into interstellar space. Until Voyager 2, these two planets have only been visited by one spacecraft, Voyager 2. The cameras, magnetometers, and other sensors aboard the Voyager spacecraft captured data and images that revealed previously unknown facts about the huge planets and their satellites. Close-up photographs from the spacecraft chronicled Jupiter's complex cloud shapes, winds, and storm systems, as well as a ring around Jupiter and volcanic activity on its moons. It was on Io when the first volcanic activity was seen outside of Earth. Observations have shown that Saturn's rings are intricately twisted and intertwined, with several ringlets clinging to them. There was a large magnetic field surrounding Uranus and 10 more moons identified by Voyager 2. After a close flyby of Neptune, it discovered six previously undiscovered moons, Proteus, Larissa, Despina, Galatea, Talassa, and Naiad, in addition to four new rings, a planet-wide magnetic field, and a variety of aurora displays. Voyager 1 became the farthest distant human-made object in space on February 17, 1998, when an Eclipse Pioneer 10 launched in 1972. Voyager 1 and 2 were far beyond Pluto's orbit in 2004. After 35 years of continuous operation, the Voyager spacecraft became the first to hold the record for the longest-running spacecraft. After crossing the heliopause, the outermost point of the Sun's magnetic field and solar wind, Voyager 1 became the first space probe to enter interstellar space on August 25, 2012. After crossing the heliopause on November 5, 2018, Voyager 2 returned to Earth. Until 2030, the Voyagers were projected to be operational. There was a message on board each vessel intended for any form of extraterrestrial intelligence that could happen to come across it in the near future. It was a gold-plated copper phonograph record that had visuals and sounds intended to represent the variety of life and culture on the planet Earth. The Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft aren't solar-powered since they wouldn't function that far from the sun. They employ radioisotope thermoelectric generators for energy. Each Voyager probe has three RTGs that utilize plutonium-238 as fuel. Isotope decay provides heat that is turned into electrical energy. When the Voyagers launched, they generated 470 watts, 30 volts DC, but that has decreased with time. 
It's not only the fuel, the thermocouples also decayed over time. As of 2011, the missions generated little under 270 watts apiece, 76% of the power at the start of the expedition. The spaceship has an extra power source that's vital to its functioning. They feature tiny thrusters that enable them to face the ground for communication when needed. These thrusters use hydrazine fuel. Even if they only function in spurts, they will end. Backup thrusters are an intriguing feature. After 37 years, the main thrusters failed, so NASA went to backup engines that hadn't fired in over 40 years. They worked brilliantly. Deep in space, where even sunlight can't reach, Voyager 2 is a space exploration milestone, the second spacecraft to reach interstellar space. At 119 AU from the Sun, this happened. One astronomical unit is the distance between the Sun and Earth, approximately 150 million kilometers. Voyager 1 did it years earlier because it had fewer diversions. Voyager 2 was the first spacecraft to directly sample the electrically charged haze or plasmas filling interstellar space and the solar system's farthest outskirts. It was able to analyze solar winds, the composition and behavior of plasma particles, the interaction of cosmic rays, the structure and direction of magnetic fields, and other traits that define the edges of the solar system. Today, scientists are still producing studies based on Voyager 2's findings as it left the solar system. Voyager 2's entry into interstellar space has helped us understand the solar system's edge and show us new things. The experience questioned our assumptions about the boundaries. To understand Voyager 2 recent discoveries, you must grasp how the Sun operates. Contrary to popular belief, the Sun isn't a calm, glowing orb. Instead, it's a nuclear furnace orbiting the galactic core at 450,000 miles per hour. You may not experience the solar system's fast speed due to its immensity. Apart from its speed and intensity, the Sun is a continual generator of magnetic fields, causing its surface to constantly spew out the solar wind. The gust carries the Sun's magnetic field in all directions. The solar wind reaches the interstellar medium, debris from old stellar explosions. Like a boil in water, solar wind and interstellar medium don't mix well. This causes solar wind to generate a bubble in the heliosphere. According to the two missions, this bubble reaches 11 billion kilometers from the sun. It envelops all eight planets, suns, and several things around our star. Heliosphere works as a shield. It blocks most of the galaxy's highest energy radiation. Your DNA would have been altered without it. The heliosphere ends at the heliopause when interstellar space begins. So how does this line look? We can better visualize our sun's galactic voyage with this information. We will learn more about the conditions of other stars around the galaxy as a result of this mission. Scientists were thrilled for these reasons when Voyager 2 approached the asteroid belt. Remember that Voyager 1's equipment ceased operating before it crossed the barrier into interstellar space. Consequently, there were no means to keep track of its progress throughout this time. Researchers may witness for the first time what happens to an object when it reaches within 114 million miles of the heliopause thanks to Voyager 2's flyby. There was a gradual increase in the density of the plasma around the spacecraft. The interstellar medium, on the other hand, heated up to 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit after it crossed the border. That was hotter than experts had predicted. Because the plasma was so thin and diffuse surrounding Voyager 2, it was able to maintain an exceptionally low temperature in proximity to the spacecraft. Voyager 2 confirmed that the heliopause is leaky. Both directions leak. Voyager 1 sailed through the interstellar particles that had pierced through the heliopause like tree roots. Voyager 2 meant low-energy particles that went past the heliopause by 100 million kilometers. Voyager 1 got near 800 million miles of the heliopause when the outgoing solar wind slowed to a crawl before Voyager 2 passed it. So solar wind formed a separate layer almost as wide as Voyager 1's stationary one. Voyager proved the sun's effect extends beyond the solar system. The sun constantly ejects plasma shock waves, called CMEs. They shape the solar system. Voyager 2 data demonstrated how CMEs spread beyond the heliopause, reducing cosmic radiation far beyond bubble. This resembles galactic life. Supernova also sends shockwaves into space, albeit not as violently as CMEs. 
supernova shockwaves sparked the solar system's creation. Voyager 2 implies that the Sun may have influenced the development of life on other planets in our solar system and beyond. That's all for today, guys. Kindly like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our newest videos. Also, please do well to let us know your thoughts about the Voyager mission in the comments section. Thanks for watching.